Today on Aussie Arvos, we're going to be building this. We are building from scratch our own budget canopy setup that anyone can do at home. It's going to have a kitchen, 240 volt power, a custom modded fridge, and most importantly, plenty of storage. So let's get started. G'day guys, welcome back to Aussie Arvos. This week, as you can tell, we are finally getting around to fitting out the canopy. Now, I've been dying to do this and it's been a long time coming, but as I mentioned previously, there was a lot of uh, thought that had to go into this before we tackled it. Um, and I've got a few good ideas in my head and we've got a whole bunch of things to throw in here uh, and fit it out. So, got a fair bit of work ahead of us, but I reckon we're just gonna get straight into it. Let's get started. So as you can see, we've got the canopy all cleaned out. I pulled everything out, so we've got a clean slate to start with because we're gonna be doing it properly this time. Now, the first step in this canopy build is building a false floor. Now, the reason for putting a false floor in is to essentially bring the height of the floor up to this lip. So as you can imagine, it'd be pretty hard to just go and bolt like a fridge slide or whatever in here because it's gonna clash with this lip unless you've, unless you've got it up on some sort of riser. Now, for my false floor frame, I'm using 40 by 40 by 2.5 aluminium. And the reason behind that is not only is it strong and gives me something good to fix into for the floor, but it is also light. Now, the aim with this canopy is to try and do it and keep it light, but also do it sort of on the cheap side a bit. So, we have got a set of scales here, and as we go along, I'm gonna try and weigh things as I go through, and then hopefully by the end, we can get a rough calculation of how much weight we've actually thrown in here. So to fix down my aluminium to the floor of the canopy, I'm actually gonna be using a polyurethane sealant. Now, the reason for this is that I didn't wanna actually drill holes right through just because it's just another way the water can get in and you know, I just sort of wanted to keep it all nice one sheet floor. Now, the other thing that's great about this stuff is that it is really flexible. So with all the vibrations, corrugations that you will experience in the car, this has enough movement or uh, allows enough movement that it's not just gonna break away the bond. Um, it, it'll give it a bit of movement to move around. Um, but it's super strong, so that's what we're going to be using. But before I fix down my aluminium, I'm first going to be cutting out my floor sheet. So I'm using 12mm ply. We've got a bunch of this stuff at home that Dad's bought, and honestly, it's really easy to work with. And in terms of plywood, being 12mm, it's sort of the lightest that you can get while still being structural. So I'm just going to zip out a couple rectangles. They're pretty basic shapes, uh, and then we can fit them on the floor. Let's see, now we've got that nice flush. That's what we want. So while the adhesive's drying, I'm gonna actually go onto the walls. Now, I'm not gonna put walls on every, you know, sort of side and roof of the canopy because I'm gonna try and keep the weight down, but I'm gonna be using it to hide uh, electrical wiring as well as mounting some 12 volt accessories. So there's just a couple little panels to make up for the front wall, so I'm gonna quickly cut them out and then we can go test fit them in. Like that. So I've just got my wall pieces cut out and just test fitted up. Now, as you can see, the way I'm going about this is I've got individual sections of timber inserted around the framing in the wall. Now, the reason I'm doing this is just to minimize the amount of weight in the car. Rather than having one big panel, I'm just gonna have select bits of timber where I need them so I can fix um, 12 volt appliances, accessories, that sort of thing. And it also means that it gives me the most space width ways where if I had a wall on the face here, it would end up protruding more. So this is the best of both worlds for weight and space. Now, I'll be fixing these to the wall uh, the same as I did with the aluminium, so just using um, the liquid nails or Sikaflex or whatever. And yeah, they should be pretty sturdy in there. So while we're doing this stuff, I just want to quickly touch on the whole idea of insulating your canopy. Now, when we first introduced that I got the new uh, AP Boxes canopy, a lot of you mentioned that I should be insulating it, uh, particularly on the roof. Now, I do agree that insulation, obviously it works. I'm trying to say insulation doesn't do anything, but a massive thing to consider is the color of your canopy. Now, for a black canopy, I think insulation is definitely definitely a necessity. We all know how hot black things get in the sun, but even today, me and Patrick have still been so amazed by having the white canopy. This has been sitting in the sun. It's like a 35 degree day, not a cloud in the sky, and it is cool to the touch. And we did a little test on the bottom of the car over there with the thermal and comparing the black stainless snorkel to the white paint of the car. And it was literally, the white paint was half the temperature of the black. I think it was like 60 degrees was the black and 30 degrees was the why. And for that reason, I'm not gonna bother insulating yet. And even if I do go to insulate, it would only be on the roof as I feel that these other sides of the canopy, cause they're not, cause they're vertical. They don't actually cop any sunlight. So the only place to insulate would be the roof, but it can be done at a later date if I feel the need, because I'm not gonna be putting a roof panel or anything in there. 
Now, I'm going to be painting all the timber I use with exterior paint. This will not only make it look a whole lot better, but will also protect it from any moisture. Then I could fix the floor sheets down to my aluminium frame below, making sure to use plenty of screws so it's nice and strong. So I've got the floor sheets all secured down. They are super sturdy and not going anywhere and they're gonna be the perfect base to fix everything down to. Now, the next step is to actually start putting in some of the accessories and figuring out what room I've got to work with. So first I'm gonna put in the accessories that are like fixed in dimension. So that being my pantry slide and my upright fridge. And then once we've got them in, we can figure out what other room we've got to play with. <laughs> All right, so we've got our upright fridge and the AP boxes, pantry slides sitting inside the canopy. So I've positioned them uh, where I want them to, you know, maximize space and also just for functionality. I've, I've, I've found that, you know, I am happy with the fridge at the front. I think it's good to keep the weight sort of forward. Um, and I think the way that the pantry slide slides all the way out is best done at the back. So with these sitting where I want it, it means I can now go and build the rest of the drawers and things around them. So we're gonna start with the other side because it's a little bit more simple and basic. So I'm gonna go grab a bunch of sheets of ply and start cutting some things out. As well as using wood screws, I'm using wood glue to join my timber together as it should make it a lot stronger and also hopefully last a lot longer. Look at the weight saving. So I've got my drawer frame in the car, but I haven't actually explained to you guys what my plan is for the driver's side of the canopy here. So let me run you through it. Pretty much the plan is here to have a big double drawer on the bottom. So I'm gonna have two 600 wide drawers that pull out about, you know, so far. And they're gonna be for storing things like tools, spare parts, any other miscellaneous items that generally just stay in the car. And then the idea with the space up top here is that it's just free storage. So items for me, such as my swag, because I don't have a rooftop tent, will be able to fit in here. I'm also gonna be able to put in other, you know, awkward large objects like duffel bags, camp chairs, that sort of thing. It's just gonna be a spot for free space that is very versatile. So with that, I've gotta go and make up the actual drawers to go inside this frame. So let's get onto that now. Timber cut. All right, as you can see, I've got my double drawers assembled and in the car, well, mostly assembled. So pretty much, it is basic in concept, but they're gonna be very, very practical. So as you can see, these drawers are absolutely massive. They come out about 700 mil and they'll come to about there-ish and they're about 600 wide. So the amount of stuff you can fit in here is actually unbelievable and still at a good working height, you can access everything easily. Now, before I pull these out and paint them and then do a final assembly in the car, I'm actually just gonna leave them sitting in here while I build the drawer on the other side because I wanna make sure that everything fits together before I pull it out and paint it. So let's cross over to the other side and I'll show you what my plans are. So for the passenger side of the canopy, this is going to be my cooking workspace. Now, my plan is to have a slide out table that actually comes from underneath a slide out drawer. So it's a little bit more in depth than the other drawer system, but I think I should be able to get my head around it. So we'll start knocking up a few bits of timber and see what we can come up with. Now all this carpentry work is a bit of a learning curve for me, so I tried my best to mark out accurately, cut straight and ensure I didn't waste any material. These might not be the most complex drawers, but they did take a surprising amount of time to get right. So I got the drawers painted up, sitting back in the car and they're starting to take shape. Now the next step is to actually make them function properly like drawers. So in my case, I wanted something that was going to uh, operate smoothly and the main one being that it would lock out so that if you're on a hill or something or when it's closed, you know it's not going to slide in or out. So for that reason, I've gone with drawer slides or drawer runners. Now these I actually managed to source off eBay because it was quite a bit cheaper than some of the other places you can get them. So for 50 bucks a pair, they're 125 kilo drawer slides and these are 700 mil uh, long, so open up to 1400. Um, and honestly, they look super good. Like they look the same as the one in Paddy's car. So I don't think I've compromised on quality by going eBay. So yeah, keen to install them. So let's get them mounted up on the drawers. Okay. so. Locking drawer slide. So I'm gonna have two of them, obviously, one either side, but when dealing with a drawer that's big, it's actually not that easy to have to unlock two separate slides and then still pull the drawer out at the same time. So what I'm gonna actually do, which is uh, what I learned off of Patrick's drawer system, is that you can just use a one locking drawer slide on one side and the other can just be a just a free slide, non-locking. Pretty much all you have to do to convert them is just there's a couple rivets that you drill out. Uh, and that just removes the locking mechanism and then it just becomes a free running draw slide. 
But sometimes, no matter how hard you try, things just don't always work out. With nothing seeming to be working, I decided to call it a day and come back with a fresh mind tomorrow. All right, so after lots and lots of uh, stuffing around and troubleshooting, I've managed to get the drawers uh, to work. It honestly ended up being a lot harder than I considered. Um, just getting all the clearances exactly right, working with timber that isn't exactly straight, that sort of thing. It just made it a bit difficult to get the runners to work the way they should. With that done anyway, it uh, means we can finally put some uh, carpet on them uh, and we'll start laying it down and then we'll be very close to sort of getting this thing wrapped up. All right, so ready to start carpeting. Now, in the interest of weight saving, I'm gonna try and do this sort of sparingly. I didn't wanna to have to buy heaps of carpet because it is expensive. And I also don't wanna carpet areas that don't need it, which not only adds more weight, but adds more thickness uh, and takes off your clearances and things. So when I do this, I'm gonna try to be sparing and only put on the areas that need it. So we've got some glue here and some carpet, and we're just gonna get stuck into it. All right, so I got all the drawers and panels finally carpeted up and they've turned out a hell of a lot better than uh, they were when they were raw. Uh, the carpet really does work wonders when it comes to, you know, covering up imperfections, which is good for me because, yeah, they weren't looking too crash hot before that. So anyway, with that done, we can now finally begin starting to throw some of this stuff into the canopy permanently. So I'm going to begin with my infill panels for the front. So these are going to be getting like urethane to the front of the canopy. Uh, and I'm gonna mount um, a few things on here. So we'll start with that and then we can start putting all the drawer frames in and the drawers. So we've got the wall panels now fixed to the canopy. They're not going anywhere. And that means we can start mounting stuff to it now. I wanna mount stuff before I put everything else in while I've still got room. So we've got a few little electrical things that are going on there. So I'll start with the big one, which is we're putting a inverter in there. So this is just a 1500 watt uh, Kings inverter. It was like 150 bucks and Patrick uses the one in his car all the time and it works awesome. So it was a bit of a no brainer. Uh, so that'll be getting mounted on the wall, sort of like so. Now, obviously, because I've got the battery under the tray in my setup, all I've got running in is just a positive and negative cable, so which is really handy. That's all I have to worry about. So from the positive and negative, we're going to be running across to these little bus bars or distribution boards mounted up, sort of like so. Uh, and then from there, I can distribute from here to the inverter, uh, as well as like my fuse panel, which I can run, you know, lights and accessories off. Um, and then I'm also going to have a face panel uh, that will house like a little switchboard for switching on lights and outlets and stuff uh, as well as a inverter controller and also hopefully a like twin GPO outlet just like a house outlet uh, will sit down the bottom here and connect back to the inverter so if I want to power 240 appliances I can just plug them in right here nice and easy so with that we're going to start fitting some things up so let's get into it All right, so I've got the little 12 volt panel sort of all set up. It's not entirely wired up, but there's a couple of little accessories to add first before I screw it all into place. But I'm really happy with how it's come out. It's, it's really neat and simple. Um, and as you can see, so I've got my switch panel, um, your GPO outlet for the inverter, as well as an inverter remote, so I don't have to access that switch uh, when the fridge is eventually sitting here. Uh, and behind, it all turned out pretty neat too. Um, there will be a lot more wires and stuff running through, through here, but. These bus bars make everything a hell of a lot neater so I can just run from a main power to these and then I've got it branching off to like my fuse panel, inverter, that sort of thing. So with that, before we add any more accessories, I'm actually going to start putting the drawers in. Yeah, that's really going to make this canopy sort of come to life and actually look like I've done something. For now, it's still empty. So all the drawers are sitting there ready to go. So let's bring them in and fix them down. And as I said earlier, I'm going to try and weigh everything as we put it in. So 17 kilos. Uh, which isn't too bad, I think, considering the size of it. So it's about 20 kilos, which is about right from memory. First, I have to drill some uh, mounting holes. Now, luckily for me, I can actually fix him down straight through the floor and actually into the aluminium that I ran across the floor. So it's not just on the ply, it's actually right the way through, which is fantastic. So not that heavy that is actually, surprisingly. Seven kilos. All right, so the next thing to go in is the fridge. Now, before we chuck it in, I've got to perform a little modification. Now, you remember that when I used it over the summer, it was just drawing way too much power. I was having issues with it not keeping the whole fridge cold, and in order to keep the fridge cold, it was just running non-stop and draining my battery. So, 
Hopefully, this little mod we're about to do will fix all of that. Now, you've probably all seen this before. Uh, this is just a little 12 volt uh, computer fan. And pretty much the idea is that by putting this in the fridge and allowing it to circulate air from where the fridge actually cools, which is around the freezer, to help it circulate cool air through the fridge, it prevents the thermostat from engaging so much and running the fridge. So people have said that by putting this in, they've literally doubled the efficiency or halved the running time of their fridge and see much more consistent temperatures. So got my computer fan. I'm literally just gonna stick it in there and run some wires back to the compressor circuit so it powers on with the compressor and we'll see if it makes any difference. If you don't feel like drilling a hole in your fridge, it is possible to route the wiring through an existing hole behind the control panel. However, it is pretty finicky with all the expansion foam in there. So I opted to drill a new hole and just silicon it up. I then siliconed the fan in place and wired it up to the compressor circuit. So next thing to go in is the fridge. And um, believe me when I say, it only just fits. Just right. And then obviously the table still has to go at the bottom. But it's in. And it works. That is a very nice deep drawer. You can fit a lot in that. <laughs> and then we could add the last finishing touches. All right, so I'm gonna whack some handles on the drawers. I'm just using these like soft, they're like a kayak handle I got off eBay for cheap as. Uh, they're the same ones, or very similar to what's on Paddy's drawers and they work really well. So that's what we're using. So I'll grab a couple of screws, fix them in like so, and then we should be able to open the drawers very easily. I then put some more carpet on the exposed floor areas just to give it that nice finished look. Last piece of the puzzle, the tabletop. I'm using a sheet of malamine and I'm covering it in a folded sheet of stainless steel. So one mil stainless that we had in the shed. I want a nice cooktop that you know you can cut on, prepare food on, wipe clean easily, that sort of thing. So I'm gonna use the same contact adhesive that I use for the carpet because it'll spread out nice and thin. Chuck a layer on each and then we'll clamp it to something flat overnight. And then we can chuck it on the drawers. All right, stainless bench going in. Hopefully it fits. That's, that is smith. Should be able to hang that. Bring that out with it. That is so sweet. That is like wicked. That's actually pretty good working height too. All right, so got our stainless bench in. I'm actually stoked with how this come off. As you saw there, it works freaking awesome. Comes right the way out. Um, so, with that done, the next thing is to add some lights, finally. So, let me show you what I'm using for lights. So, for the lights, I wanted something simple and effective, and so I've gone with the strip-style lighting. So, this particular one is from Off-Road Living. It's a dual-color, dimmable LED strip. Uh, it's 90 centimeters long, and the colors in these are white and red. Now, I wanted white, obviously, because it makes everything easy to see. When you need to find stuff, white light is the best, but I also wanted the red for at night time. You don't want to attract the bugs, but you also want to be able to see the red is really good and being dimmable, you can set whatever sort of, how bright you want it to be. So these will actually fit really well in the canopy. I'm going to be doing one either side fixed up here. It's got 3M tape on the back, which makes it easy. Uh, and then that'll simply wire in uh, to my switch panel. And you can control these from the light directly. So your red and black switches on there. I'm going to put it to a switch as well so I can pick what setting I want on here and then control it via the switch. So it should be pretty straightforward. So let's stick it in. All right, so we've got everything now fixed down. I've got the lights wired up, but before I do a full run around and show you it all working, I have one more mod to add. Now that I have an upright fridge, I've seen a great way of using this space, and that is with a fridge organizer. I saw a mate had one of these on his upright fridge, and I thought that is probably the best use of space I've ever seen. So I got one from Blacksmith Camping Supplies, and this thing is super well made, and the reason it's well made is because it's made in Oz. So awesome thing and it just sticks on with Velcro, like super easy and the amount of versatility out of sticking that on the front of your fridge is insane. So we're gonna whack this on here uh, and then we'll have the maximum storage and organization. That's strong ass. <laughs> you can rip the door off I reckon with that thing. It actually sort of works as a handle as well because that handle's not that great. All right, and finally to top off the fridge, Aussie Arvo sticker for one. You can get these at our website, aussiearvos.com.au. Five bucks, free shipping, Australia-wide. See if I can get it straight. Aussie Arvos. And 
in suitability of officially voiding the warranty <laughs> on the King's fridge, we have the I void warranties, King Chrome. So that'll be going up there as well because this fridge is no longer under warranty. It's got a big hole in the back of it. Very good. Complete look, look at that. Not bad at all. All right, so the canopy is all done. Everything's wide, everything's secured. It's not going anywhere and it looks a treat. But before I run you around the whole setup, I wanna to touch on the weight of this thing because as you guys would have seen, we have sort of had weight conscious in mind. Um, and the result is we estimated about 150 kilos and that's, you know, fridge, pantry slide, drawers, all the trial world stuff, the floorboards, which I think is honestly pretty reasonable for a sort of full fit out. But anyway, it's pretty hard to keep these things down on weight these days as it is. But yeah, I think we did all right. So anyway, let's run you through this canopy. All right, so starting on the driver's side of the canopy. Now, the first thing that I'm super excited about is my light. So these things work awesome. White LED, bright as, as well as the red. And this is all, again, as I mentioned earlier, dimmable. So turn it way up if you want or turn it way down. And honestly, I just think these are an awesome light. They're super cheap. So they're the AllSpark Pro Series from Off-Road Living. Honestly, go check them out if you're looking for canopy lighting. Now, the next thing on this side, obviously this is sort of the storage side of the canopy. So I've got my two big double drawers that come and lock out like that. They're super good, both of them work really good in the end. I know we had a bit of a hiccup on the way through, but they've ended up working out really nicely and they shut and open really well. I've got a big storage space up the top here where my swag's gonna go, chair, everything else. I'm gonna be able to stuff stuff down the side of the drawers as well. So really good open space to work with here. Then coming over to the passenger side of the car, this is like the kitchen living area of the car. So first up, we've got the AP boxes, pantry slide, and this thing works awesome as you'd expect. Super good use of space and heaps of storage. I'm keen as to be able to sort all my food out in this stuff, which will be awesome. Next up is the sort of uh, kitchen slide, I guess you could call it. Um, I've got, first of all, my nice, massive, deep drawer. Now, this is gonna be great for housing all sorts of kitchenware, like I've made sure it's uh, tall enough to fit a camp oven, uh, pots and pans, anything bulky like that, it'll fit really well. And the little thing just to finish this off is my stainless steel cooktop that slides out from underneath. So this is gonna be a great meal prep surface, cut on it, whatever, super easy to clean, and it just slides in and out really nice. I'm super stoked with how the drawer slides worked out on that one. And obviously above that, more just storage space. There might be future things to come in here in organization, but for now I kept it all nice and open. And next up, we've got the upright fridge. Now I showed you just before my fridge organizer, so I'm super keen to sort of stick a few things in here and get it all nice and neat because I think it's a great use of space. And then the King's fridge still working as it did, but now we've got our little uh, 12 volt computer fan in there. And if I power it on like this, and when the compressor kicks in, you'll quickly see, our little fan powers on. And now that's gonna cycle, not heaps of air, but just enough air around the fridge to really make sure that everywhere stays cool. So super keen and interested to see how that works with the efficiency of the fridge. And then we come to the front of the canopy where I've got my power station. So I've got my switch panel, which does my lights. And then I've also got a 12 volt socket, USB ports, volt gauge, a bunch of other switches that I can eventually put onto other things. And then down here, this is the cool one that I'm excited to test. I've actually got my inverter remote with the flick of the button, you can hear the inverter turn on. And I've also got a GPO outlet, so I can plug appliances straight into this. Now, we haven't used the inverter yet, and we're gonna test it out now. I've bought a fan, so with any luck, that inverter should be turned on, and I should just be able to... Let's see, eh? <laughs> Look at that. 240 volt power straight out of the car. If we're really keen, we can actually go jump on the Victron app that's actually so crazy to think that the car's powering like a 240 appliance, that's just wild. Oh yeah, five amps, happy days mate. There you go, so anyway, we've got 240 power and obviously you would have seen there using the Victron app, it's all run through the smart shunt. So anything I power off of the canopy, I'm gonna be able to monitor how much power it's drawing, which is an awesome feature. So that's the canopy fit out all done just in time before we head up to Queensland and I'm super stoked with how it turned out. As you saw through the episode, we had a couple little dramas here and there with getting draw slides to work and stuff not lining up, but in the end it all worked out and I think for a first attempt, um, yeah, I'm pretty proud of myself, I, I suppose. So if you like it, make sure you let us know in the comments, leave a like, make sure you get subscribed because you're gonna see a whole lot more of this car doing some cool stuff as well and yeah, we'll see you in the next one guys, thanks.